friends, welcome back to Rocks for Brains. Today I came out to Woodruff, Arizona, which is a little bit southeast of Holbrook. Um, it's close by to the Petr Petrified Forest National Park. And I am out here looking for petrified wood. I've already found quite a few little colorful pieces. I mean, it's everywhere out here. And I'm hoping to find some pieces that I can tumble, some things that I can cut. You know, not necessarily huge pieces, but I'm gonna see what's out here. It would be really cool if I found some other fossils as well, because these are all from the Chinle Formation. These are Triassic aged petrified wood. So in theory, it's possible that there are fossils of different reptiles from the Triassic, but also in the cobblestones, um, there could be Permian fossils from way, way before that, um, that are now out of a conglomerate layer in the Chinle. So I'm gonna see what else I can find out here. There is a thunderstorm on the way, so I'm probably gonna stay close to the truck and I may have to run for shelter <laughs> if it gets closer, um, but it's really nice out here anyway. So let's go. That's the storm that I'm worried about. There was one over here that's kind of moved on now. Um, but that one's kind of moving that way. And then we've got another little one over here. So I'm just gonna walk around in this area for now. And then I might drive up the road just a little bit. See what else is on the other side of the hill. There's all sorts of rocks all over the ground out here. And of course, not all of them are petrified wood, um, but a lot of them are. Some of them are just chirp pieces like this from the conglomerate layer. Um, and all of these kind of like little tumbled rocks are still part of the Chinle. Ooh, that one, that one's been kind of tumbled around a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna take, turn myself around. <laughs> Get out of the wind. It's windy because of the storms. Whoa, that's cool. It is possible to find black petrified wood, so that might be chert or maybe petrified wood. I don't know. Oh, whoa, what is that? That's crazy looking. Huh. I have no idea what that is, but that's coming home. God, look at the patterns in that. All right, going in the bucket. Woo, there's some petrified wood. Oh, the colors on that are so cool. Okay, so a little bit of background on petrified wood in this area. So these are from the Chinle Formation, which if you think of the Painted Desert, all of the Painted Desert is Chinle Formation. It's middle to late Triassic period, so over 200 million years old. I think it goes from about 205 million years old at the youngest to I think 235 at the bottom. Um, where I am, I think I'm kind of in the middle or maybe the lower third. I don't know if this is technically Holbrook member or Rainbow Forest member within the Chinle Formation, but there's definitely colorful petrified wood out here for sure. And you know, there's not one layer of petrified wood within the Chinle Formation. There's, oh, I think 11 um, the last time I, I looked it up. So each layer has a slightly different color pattern or you know mineral pattern it, the petrified wood looks different because of the conditions that existed when it fossilized oh take a look at that rock i'm just sitting on the ground here and <laughs> just looking at the stuff around me that's cool so the time period when these trees were still alive it was you know over 200 million years ago of course but the land was also in a different place and if you think about this area being much farther south, the latitude was closer to present day Panama. It was a tropical area. So these are all trees that were tropical conifer trees. And at that time, 
There were no flowering trees. There were no angiosperms. They were all gymnosperms or ferns. And, you know, scientists have figured out what some of these trees are. Well, I should say they've named them. They've given them species names um, because sometimes, I don't know if I can find one here, but sometimes they're not as fossilized as these really colorful pieces. And if you take a thin slice and look at it under a microscope, ooh, look at that one. Oh, you can actually see the cell walls of the trees still in there, and then they can classify them based on that um, and you know the other context. And it's rare to find bark because of the way that these fossilized. At that time, there was a river system. So as the trees died and they fell into the river, they got buried up and stuck you know, in the sediment of the river. Nearby, there were lots of volcanoes and so volcanic ash was mixed in with the river sediments. And from the volcanic ash, you then get amorphous silica, so uncrystallized silica, which when combines with water, causes a chemical reaction, turns into silicic acid. That seeps into the cell walls of the tree, uh, into the tree, and then over time, there's a chemical process of crystallization, and the cells fill up with crystals, and the wood eventually turns to stone. So these are, you know, the pieces of petrified wood, they are fossils. And they're pretty cool fossils. Okay, there's a piece that looks a little bit more like wood. It still has kind of like an agatized band in there, but you can see more of the grain and it's not that colorful. So potentially, you know, if you were to thin slice that, but that's still pretty rare, even with these pieces. Um, and I certainly don't have the equipment <laughs> or the expertise to do that. That would just be a garden rock for me anyway, so that one, I'm gonna leave that there. Leave it for the next person. Well, there's a very healthy prickly pear. I gotta watch out, I don't run into these things while I'm looking on the ground and not paying attention. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's a tiny piece, but there's some of that rainbow wood. So that's kind of what Arizona is known for, is this really colorful, what they call rainbow petrified wood. And it all, you know, depends on, like I said, the minerals that were in layers when they fossilized. So sometimes you can have iron oxides that cause the orange and the reds. You can have reduced iron, you can have reduced manganese, making the purples, um, and of course there's some yellows in there, potentially some sulfur, um, but it's all quartz. You know, you think about agates, that's why the nickname is agatized petrified wood, it's silicon dioxide, it's quartz, it breaks with conchoidal fractures, it's just a very microcrystalline quartz because it's a fossil um, and it had penetrated inside the cells of trees. And so it's very, very dense when it's at this stage, which makes it really good for tumbling and really good for polishing. I see a little bit of color in this one, but it's kind of buried. Ooh, Ooh that's nice. That's a cool pink. Hmm. I don't know if that's petrified wood. It could be petrified wood that got tumbled in the Triassic River. Oh, that's cool anyway. There's something else next to it, but that's, that's nothing. Oh, look how pink that one is. Oh, that's so cool. And you can see the grains of the wood in there. So, you know, sometimes you can see tree rings, but 
but because these were trees living in a tropical environment they're not necessarily annual growth rings um, because tropical environments don't have like the cold and hot seasons they're kind of temperate the whole whole year round so not really possible to count the rings on these guys even if you found a whole log that wouldn't give you an accurate indication of how old the tree was when it died but it's still pretty cool look at the crazy colors on that piece there's like red, yellow, pink, purple. Uh, the green is, I think, just plant material. <laughs> you know, like um, lichens or something on there. I don't think the green is actually part of the petrified wood. It is possible to find green petrified wood, but it's pretty rare. You have to have deposits with some copper in it. So... Probably not going to find any here. I think the closest is um, closer to Winslow. There's a cool one. Oh man. Look at the grain in there. That's so cool. That is such a neat pattern. It's like speckly, but then the lines are the grains of the wood. Nice. Oh, look at that one. Oh, it's got some beautiful colors. That's awesome. I'm not sure why the outside of it does this kind of like opaque rindness almost. I mean, the center is nice and colorful, but interesting. You can easily grind that off on the flat lap and polish it up. Well, I drove a little bit farther down the road and stopped at a place that had a little bit more kind of scattered rocks just in general scattered on the ground. Maybe a little wash area over there. Um, I'm gonna walk over there and check it out. But these storms are kind of building on me so might have to take a break for a little bit and wait wait them out um, we'll see how it goes rain's not a big deal lightning no thank you well there's my first big piece of petrified wood i think looks like it it's kind of i don't know it's a little junky probably not gonna take it there is a weight limit even for BLM, but I know that's pretty cool. It might be, well, <laughs> I, I don't know. So it could be petrified wood, but there is also a layer in this area called the persistent red silkrete. And it's a, a mini extinction layer that I believe they've connected to a meteor impact event in what is now, I think, southwestern Canada. Um, it doesn't look quite like that. It's, it is red and kind of like, you know, gnarly looking. So I'm not used to seeing pieces that big of the silk reed, but I don't know, that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh, I haven't gotten very far because <laughs> there's too much out here. Look at that. So gorgeous. Yeah, I've, I've gotten like, you know, five steps away from the truck. I'm trying to make it over a little bit past those trees there. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, this is what you want to look for. All of this little gravel. This is going to have a lot of little pieces of petrified wood. I mean, there's, it's everywhere. That's a piece. That might be, ooh. That actually might be a scallop fossil. I don't know. Huh. All right, that one's stumping me, but I like it. It's cool. 
Yep, there's some there. That's petrified wood. Oh. oh. <laughs> Turn around, and that's petrified wood. Ooh. Look at that one. Has a little bit of the the layer just underneath the bark. I think it's a uh, cabrium. So not bark, because remember these were in a river system, so they were tumbling around and all the bark fell off of it before it was fossilized. But that's still pretty cool with the texture on it. Yeah, all of this, all of this red stuff. This is all little pieces of petrified wood. Whoa, that is super yellow. Look at that. That's pretty unique. I haven't seen stuff that's that yellow before. At least that much of it. Looks like there's some more pieces of maybe the same log there. Let me see what's up here. I still haven't gotten to the wash, <laughs> but I'm making my way slowly. Okay, I see something that might be pretty cool. Nope. <laughs> I was hoping that this color and this texture meant bone fossil. But no, it doesn't look like it. It's interesting. Some of the fossils out here are actually kind of like a purple color. Some of the bone fossils anyway. Because they're buried in the same layer as the petrified wood, so... You know, it's the same kind of minerals. I wouldn't be able to collect it. You can't collect vertebrate fossils, but it would still be cool to see. All right, well, I guess it's not really a wash. Maybe it's just if I go far, if I were to go farther, there may be something that way, but I don't really need to go that way. I'm finding all sorts of stuff just in this area, so probably just gonna make a circle around, head back to the truck, maybe see what else is further down the road. Now that's interesting. So that might be a shell fossil from the Permian because this looks like a rock that was part of the conglomerate and those lines are pretty obvious. It's a weird looking rock regardless. I like that though. That's really neat. There's a nice big chunky piece. Oh yeah. I like that. There's a couple of those right here. A piece with some yellow and some white. I hear rumbling in the distance, but so far it seemed to be in the only place without an actual storm, <laughs> which is lucky. There's a nice big piece there. That's cool. Yeah, that's definitely weathered, but I can still tell that it's petrified wood. Oh man, this is a good spot. Look at that, all of this. So colorful. Well, I'm starting to feel some rain sprinkles. I have to start heading back to the truck, I think. Just in case. Ooh, that's cool. It's like a whitish pink color. It's almost translucent. That is gorgeous. All right, I like that one. That one looks like it has, oh man. Yep, look at those lines. The green of the wood in there. So cool. There's a couple little pieces down right here. Oh, it looks like another little shell fossil. That one might actually be a brachiopod. Whoa. That's cool. It's like a tiny little agatized brachiopod. Nice. And then, oh, some really dark red purple petrified wood right there. There's 
some more of that white, almost translucent. Wow. Oh, there's some sparkles, almost tiny, tiny little Jersey crystals in there too. <laughs> it is possible to find almost like geodes inside the petrified wood, because if there was a, a cavity, you know, a void in the log, when it was buried and fossilized, then that void would fill up with the crystals. So it is possible. Hey, it's like candy corn rock. <laughs> That's awesome. It's three different colors. Oh man, that is gorgeous. Some mule deer or some pronghorn have been out here. There's a bunch of tracks right here. And some petrified wood. Oh, look at that one. Nice. Oh, check that out. Oof. That's cool. <laughs> Yellow and pink. I like that one. Ooh, there's a bigger chunk. Look at that. Nice. I've now come farther down the road a little ways. Um, the road is right there. Definitely paying attention to the storms because the washes out here can flash flood and they typically go east to west. So definitely paying attention. Um, the storms, there are some storms in that direction, and there's storms over there. <laughs> it looks like it was wet not too long ago. Oh, I see a big colorful piece right here. Oh, oh man. That's excellent. Excellent, excellent. Look at that. Nice. Oh, small piece, but that is really colorful. I think I see another one right there. Yep. Very cool. Oh man, I just picked this up. That is incredible. It's like little spider webs of red and yellow. And it was like this on the ground, and I flipped it over. That might be the find of the day. Okay, I'm betting that this one you can actually see through. Yep. Nice. Look at that one. Oh. Oh, purple, purple and red and yellow. This is the good spot down here for sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign. Oh man, Aww. what was that? A pronghorn or a deer or something. If it had less flesh left on it, I might actually take it home and put it in my cactus garden, but that's kind of gross. Interesting, but gross. Oh, that was awesome. Look at all this. That was just on the surface. So this is a really good place if you want to get small petrified wood, really colorful stuff, and not have to work too hard for it. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm definitely coming back here because um, I've only explored just a little bit of it. Might even be a fun place to camp. I mean, down by the trees, you know, it's a little bit of shelter from the wind. Yeah, be a good place to camp. Plus it gets a little cooler, of course. All right, 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. It was really fun to get out and rock hound again. Uh, it's been a little while. Weather and just kind of life uh, has prevented me from going out and um, collecting for a little bit, but happy to be out here again. Hopefully I can come back to this spot relatively soon. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, try to learn something new every day. Bye.